something I want to talk about tonight too. Uh, you know, when, when we're fasting like this, why are we fasting? Have you ever asked your question that? Have you ever asked yourself, why am I fasting? What's it going to do? What's it? What's the outcome? What do I get out of it? Have you ever asked that? No? Or you just do it because the Bible says it, right? Is that right? <laughs> Well, I want, you to, I want you to understand when you fast, what it's doing is, is it's, it's getting you, just like my wife said, it's getting you closer to God. It's putting down the things that bog you down or take your focus off God. Right? You ever notice that when you're fasting now? That you're more in tune or you're reading your word. Yeah. You're listening to Christian music. Praying for people. Have you all done that? Yeah. yeah. You know, one of the things what happens is he'll bring things into your perspective of what in your life is keeping you from going higher in God. When you fast, it wakes you up to some of the things that may be a sin. Now, if you're a new Christian, I urge you to find out what the Ten Commandments say. Let's start by there. Let's start listening to what the Ten Commandments say. Let's follow those first. Then if you say, okay, I got those down. All right, let's move on. I'll tell you what, go to Deuteronomy. Read that. See how they let God away from, from following God. I mean, you see all kinds of crap that they went through. It's just crazy what they went through. And how they, God said, I don't want you to be like this because if you do, you won't see the promised land. It wasn't supposed to take 40 years to get to the promised land. It wasn't supposed to take that long. You ever heard that before? <laughs> but they kept going around that mountain. How many times you got to see the same mountain? Man, that's got to be boring. Huh? Right? Have you ever felt that in your own life? You felt like you went around that mountain? How many times? Once, twice. You see the same thing. You're doing the same thing as you did 10 years ago. When is enough is enough? When is enough? You know? That's why we're fasting. God, show me what I need to do so I can get to this, where I can move, so I can do, so, so I can preach, so I can teach, so I can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Who's doing that? Who's doing that? I want to see people get set free. I want to see marriages restored. I want to see all that. Yeah. All that. And I want to see you guys blessed. Exactly. Because we're supposed to be the children of God. When I see my children walk down the street, they and I see them out in public, I see them blessed. But I don't see, when we walk around, you see people say, yep, I'm highly favored, blessed by God. And, and it don't look like it, does it? Do you know the people in, 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 when they came out of Egypt that God gave them a whole set of rules and if you could do this, do this, and do this. Stay away from this. Don't marry this person because she's your aunt or don't marry this guy because he's your uncle. But the, the, the other nations were doing that stupid stuff. And they were doing crazy stuff. And you read all of Deuteronomy and God says if you'll just stay away from this, I'll bless you and bring you into the promised land. It's not hard. But, but remember what I tell, I've been telling you, there's a difference between Christians and non-Christians. Yeah. A, ch a child of God and a non-child of God. There's a difference. But you've got to straighten that line. You've got to make that in your mind. You've got to say, I'm going to do that. Because if you don't, you won't see the promises of God. Sin will keep you away from entering in the promises of God. I can, we can sit up here and you can hear the prophecies all come to you. And you can hear them all day long, how good and great your future is. But it's up to you to make that choice. Do I do that or do I go the right way? It's up to you. It's up to you. People say, well, you prophesied on me, but that never came true. I wonder why. Because you laid down what we just told you. Pick it up yeah. and be excited about what God is going to do for you if you follow. Just start there, the Ten Commandments. Start there. 
And if you feel like God's calling you to do more, then read Deuteronomy 20. I mean, all through Deuteronomy. He'll tell you everything that you need to know. And then go into the, the, the New Testament and start reading there. You'll see everything that he wants you to do. But he, he, remember this. One of the things that I get out of it is he says, listen to my voice. If you can't hear his voice, how are you supposed to listen to him? How are you supposed to listen to him? You're listening to somebody. You're listening to somebody. Right? You're listening to somebody. Somebody's telling you something. You're like, yeah, hey, that's right. That's right. I should be doing that. Is that the Holy Spirit? Really? I don't know about that. See, when, when you have the Holy Spirit, He can direct and guide you. He, he's, pointing him, he's pointing you to Jesus. And He's telling you everything that you need to know. How to get there. That's how you do it. That's how you go from what was me to the promised land. Right? Because you, you, can, you can eat manna the rest of your life and still live. But you know what? As soon as you cross that promised land, now you're living in abundance. You're living off what that promised land has grown. Amen. That's where I want to go. Mm -hmm. I don't want to live. I don't want to eat manna anymore because that you get tired of the same thing, don't you? You know, it said manna is the angel's food. And they got to eat that. Oh, well, that's great. But, and, I, and I'm sure they enjoyed it. And they kept going and they were, you know, thriving. But let me tell you, when you, when you go eat the fat of the land, like the grapes and the honey and the milk and the, and the eggs and the, and the beef and the chicken and all that, man, that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. But eating the same thing year in, year out. How many times do you want to do that? How many times do you want to do that? I don't. I want something new. You know, when, when we're fasting, when I, when I was younger, I learned that when I fasted, when I get out of the Air Force, I started fasting. And I would take three days, and I would go to a park down in southern Ohio, and I would fast. And I would... And I would just pray, and I wouldn't eat anything. All I all I'd drink, I just drink water. And so I would just get my tent. I'd sit there with my, you know, my sleeping bag, and and, um, and I just I just prayed and I read, prayed and read, prayed and read, prayed and read, and I just kept saying, God, I just want to get where you want me to go. I just want to get there. I want to get there. I want to get there. And on that third day, when I had decided how many days I was going to fast. On that third day, that's when you start hearing him talk. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the first day. And when on the first day, it was kind of more like, okay, I'm, I'm really liking it. I, mean, I wish I had me something to eat right now. <laughs> but on the second day, it got easier. And on the third day, it was just like, right, right, right. I, I, I'm right here. I know what I'm doing. I, 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 I'm almost there. And that's when he would talk. Well, when you do a 40-day fast, man, your first day is like the first three weeks. And then your second day is like the next three weeks. <laughs> and then the third day, the third day is the next three weeks. You got a long time. Right? Fill yourself up because this is when you're growing. And I'm telling you, and when he tells you, hey, I want you to get rid of that, get rid of it. The devil will never tell you to get rid of something bad, will he? No. He'll say, have some more. Right? You know, the fast is helping you seek God. You ever heard that? He's helping you seek. That is helping you seek God. And you know, when you seek God, there's more in that than what you can imagine. Because when you seek God, he says, what's he say in the Bible? He says, if you seek me, you'll find me. If you knock, the door will be open. When you go through times of trouble, don't let it, don't let it be a waste of time. Like, oh, I'm just getting through this so I can get, get done and, you know, do what I'm, you really like 
No. When you're fasting, you want to you do it because you're going somewhere. You want to do it with your fullest heart. You don't want to go, oh, I got to fast till tonight and then I'm, I get to eat. Don't do that. Don't look forward to the eating. Look forward to the suffering because that's when you grow. That's when things happen. That's when things change. Amen? Amen. You know, fasting brings the blessing of God in your life. You know, there's people that fast. They fast for things to change in their life. They fast for things that are unusual happenings in your life. They fast to break it. You know, here's, a, here's something I, I, I read. It said, unusual warfare requires unusual weapons. It don't make sense to fast when you're having trouble paying your bills. Does it? It doesn't make sense to fast if your child's unsaved. It don't make no sense. It don't make sense when you're having trouble in your marriage to fast. No, don't, don't make sense. But you know what? God uses all that. He uses all that to straighten that person out. And maybe it's not you. Maybe it is your wife or your husband. But you can bet God will get down to the bottom of it and he'll either straighten you out or straighten your spouse out. Why? Remember what it says in the Bible. He says he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I don't know about you, but that fasting part, that's diligently seeking God. Yes, because there's plenty of time where you want to go, yeah, I'll take that cupcake. I'll take that steak. I'll take that whatever else that everybody else is eating. But you know what? If you can just hold on yes. and do what we're telling you, this thing works. We've seen it for almost 30 years that we've been married. It works. Now I have a story to tell you. I have a story about a man. And this isn't about fasting. But it's the man that was ministering to this man. What he did with the Holy Spirit. So this man, they had a, uh, it was over in England. And they were, uh, had some kind of, uh, uh, it was a church over there. And so he brought this man in. He came to the church. What this man did, this man was a executioner. This was back in the 1800s. And he was an executioner. And he would take the people that had murdered people in England, and they would, they would say, well, you've been sentenced to death. And they would give them to this man. And when this man would do the execution, these people would die. Well, they found out that this man, he was the meanest, ugliest man in that city. I mean, even the wicked people hated to even listen to him because of what came out of his mouth. And he told them, he said, he said, what happens is, is when I kill, when I execute somebody for murder, that those demon spirits that were on that person that got executed, he said, it felt like they came and jumped on me. That's scripture. That does happen. <laughs> and when this happened, this man was so ugly acting, so mean, so hateful, that one that they said in, in the years to come that he bought, bought a, a, a train ticket. And he got on that train and he was going to jump in front of the other train and kill himself. Because he, he had enough. And the guy was getting ready to do this, and there was a young man that worked for the, for the railroad. And he uh, got saved. And he was on fire. Man, he was just ready to get everybody saved. And so he brought this man, and he talked to him, and he brought this man, which acted ugly, I mean, like really bad, and he brought him to this mission there in England. And this, and this, old, and this man that was so angry, so bitter, 
sat on that seat, the last row, and he was in that service, and they said he said that he was ministering to all these people that were there. And this man, he couldn't sit still. He was sitting in his chair. He was all over the place, and he was sweating. And, he, and they said that you could see the steam come off. And he said that night he got saved after two and a half hours. He got saved. And you wonder, how in the world could a wicked man like that get saved? But you know what? God says he has mercy for all. He has compassion for all. And you know what's funny is, is he went home after acting so ugly to me. And his wife saw him and, and he told her he got saved. And his wife was so touched that she got saved right there. Because the minister, after he got saved, went home with this man and spoke with him. And I just thought, man, that's awesome. That is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And this man, and, and then their children came up to her and said, Mom, what's different? Why is, it, why is there so much peace in our house now? Why is there so much peace? Why is our house so peaceful now? And she told him, she said, because your mom and dad got saved. Now you tell me how that, that wouldn't inspire you to want more of God. Look how many ugly, ugly, ugly acting people are these days. How mean and hateful. You're driving down the road and you, I mean, it just cuts you off in a minute. Or talk to you some crazy way in the store. So terrible. You know, I have another story. And this story is about a businessman. And the businessman, he had a very successful business. And him and his wife came to this meeting, and they, and they wanted to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And they came in the meeting, and the wife got filled. But, the, but, the, but her husband didn't. And he was sitting there, he was fuming. He's like, all right, I don't know, I'm going home. And he went home. And the minister said, I went home with them. And he said he went to the, went to their house and they had a really big house. He said, "Well, I'm going to get the I'm going to get the fireplace on. I'm going to get you something to eat. I'm going to do this." And the minister said, "I didn't come here to eat or enjoy your 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 heat." He said, "I came here to get you filled with the Holy Ghost." And I said, "Wow, <laughs> that's pretty powerful." And the guy he finally got filled with the Holy Ghost. And they said that when he went to work before that, that the people at his work were like, they were very edgy and touchy because the man was mean when he was at, at, his, at his business. And they, and they were all scared to listen. And they were scared to, you know, you know, make him mad. And he got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And it was so powerful, so amazing. Because when he came home, his, he had two boys. And he said that, that his, his house changed. And when they saw that minister, the two boys, saw the minister walking in front of their house, they ran down and hugged the minister. And they said, you have changed our house. We thank you for doing that. Because our dad, he's a new man now. He's a new dad. I mean, how powerful is that? That's why I tell you when we're fasting like this, we're fasting to see God move in your life. But if you can walk down the street and, and see the Holy and feel the Holy Ghost tell you, hey, you need to be nice to this person. Or you need to, you need to buy this person something and give it to them. Or this person needs a house. You know, anything. How can you not want that? How can you not want that? See, all this fasting is for a reason. We're getting closer to God. See, you can be saved and still go to heaven, but without the Holy Ghost. And it's a rough time. Because there's times when I'm out working and I can feel the Holy Spirit telling me, you know what, that, that's wrong. We probably ought to fix that. And I'll say, yep, how should I fix it? And he'll explain it to me how to fix it. And it's amazing. He'll do the same thing with you. He'll show you what you're doing wrong or what you're doing right. Because there's times he'll say, man, that sure does look good. And I say, you help me with that one. 
Because I don't know anymore I could have done that. I'm telling you right now, as you fast, ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to help you and to and fill you. Because if you do, man, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. You'll be able to do what you could not do. You know, when I used to run my business, man, I'll tell you what, it was tough. But some of them guys, man, I wanted to grab by their you know, neck and go, why in the world did you do that? Why did you do that? But there were times I also heard the Holy Ghost say, don't say nothing. Just love it. And I was like, because <laughs> I want to rip into them. Because they cost you money. And as a businessman, you can't be losing money. Now I'm going to ask you, why do you come to church? Why do you come to church? Do you come to just sit? Do you come to just watch? Do you come for fellowship? Or do you come to work and know that God is, is doing something in your life? Huh? Are you here to make a difference? Or are you here to just sit? Fellowship. I'll tell you right now, I'm not here to sit in fellowship. I can't. And I know tonight there's no music, there's no drums, no piano, and there's you know there's no bass guitar. But we do have some singing. We did have some worship. And we do have some words. And if you're willing to accept the words. And say, yeah, that's me. I need to change. Yeah, that's me. If you really want to be honest, then you know what? The Holy Spirit will be honest with you. See, he'll, he'll play that game with you. You want to be honest? Okay. Have fun. See you. I'll see you next time. I'll, I'll call you next time. Maybe you'll listen next time. Because there's some people that just go, yeah, just come in blow out. So I asked you, how many times do you want to go around that, that mountain? How many times? Until you really want to see God move in your life. Until you really want to step into your promised land. How many times? How many times? You know, one thing you need to know is Jesus embraced prayer and fasting as an effective weapon to combat the devil. Yeah. So if he did it, why can't we? Yeah. Why don't we see it as important? Yeah. You know, one thing I was reading this book because uh, uh, my friend Liv gave me a, a book and it, uh, it says, it said in there that God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the angels are all in unity. All of them. That's a lot of people to be in unity. Yeah. So why can't we do that? Can. Why can't we do that? Yeah. We have to. You know that's the way they subdue the earth is through us. Right. And if we subdue the earth, if he subdues the earth through us, then why do we stay in unity? Mm -hmm. So that we can do that. So we can become because all we're doing, we're just like cheerleaders. That's all we do is say, you can do this, you can do this. Come on, you can do it. Keep going. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're telling you now. You know, sometimes there's, in Ezekiel, it talks about the dry bones. And God asks Ezekiel, can these bones live? That's what he's asking you. Are you ready to step out? Are you ready to cross over to the promised land? Or do you want to stay in that desert where it's dry and the bones are dead? I don't know about you, but I choose life. I choose life. And if you choose life, you need the Holy Ghost. Use this time in your fasting right now to seek him and say, I need you. Because once you do, man, you're, you're, you're on a different level. Yeah. 
Can you imagine if we had a whole church full of Holy Ghost filled people? How powerful would we be in this neighborhood? How powerful would we be when we, when we go to work Monday morning? How powerful would we be not having to work for somebody else, but we can own our own businesses because that's what God really wants you to do. Amen? Amen. I know some of these words might be tough, but you know what God says is his, his word is like a two-edged sword. It goes in and it cuts. And then you pull it back out and it heals. Heals. It divides the foolishness and the, and, and, and the, and the non-thinking and it helps you get on track where God wants you to be. Do you want success or do you want failure? You have to know. You have to know. You have to know. There's things in here that I couldn't tell you. If you walked in, I wouldn't even know what you did. But because I know the Holy Ghost, I can tell you what you do. And I know how to direct you in the right direction. I know it. That's what I'm telling you today. You've got to know Him. And in this time of fasting, don't let it go to waste. Don't let this time go to waste. And not say, Holy Ghost, I need you today. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the ways that you can do it for yourself is to thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you helped me today. It, remember, it says every good thing comes down from the Father above. Yeah. If it's good, you tell him thank you. That's how you get going. Other times, or sometimes, we have a prayer service, we're going to lay hands on you, and we're just going to believe God the Holy Ghost gets on you. But you have to listen to him because I'm not going to pray for nine hours and say, well, we didn't get it. Because I didn't listen, but I thought that that's what we should do. That's why you have to listen to the Holy Ghost. You know, in fact, another thing in fasting, because this will hit every single one of you. In fasting, you want to believe God in these three areas. Direction, your family, and your finances. And you can look it up in Ezra 8.21. It talks about it. That's what you... There's all kinds of things that you should be believing God for this fasting part. But the biggest, most, most important thing is, is knowing the Holy Spirit. And knowing His voice. Remember, it says in the Bible, His sheep... My sheep know my voice. And if you're one of his sheep, I mean, not, not to say that you guys are like sheep, but I'm saying that's what he says. <laughs> but if you're one of his children, you know his voice. Just like your own daughter or son knows your voice. Exactly. Amen. Amen. Because if he, if, you know, if he knows, if you know his voice, man, how powerful are you? How much more stuff can you get done at home, at work, at school? How much more? How much more? So I urge you tonight, this is my last thing. This week as you're fasting, I want you to say, I want you while you're praying, I want you to say, Holy Ghost, I need you. I need everything that you bring. I need you to direct me and guide me. And as you do that, it doesn't say just stop there. He said keep on knocking. Keep, keep seeking it. Because in the seeking, you'll find it. Yes. In the seeking, you'll find it. If you stop seeking, you'll never find it. Seek you, and you'll find it. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen.